this homage is quite is quite big on the palate. Mm. Uh, on the nose, it was it was it was very light and uh, with all those very delicate nose and lo nose notes. But on the palate, it's everywhere. It lingers. It's still very delicate, yet it stays with you for a while. Well, that's uh, I would say both the complexity you have. Mm -hmm. That's definitely coming from uh, from the selection of the wines, Grand and Petit Champagne too. Mostly uh, Grand Champagne is in this one actually. Mm -hmm. So you get you you get the complexity, you get the finesse, the delicatesse, mm -hmm. but you don't you don't get the power, the aromatic intensity. Mm -hmm. uh, this is something that is lacking a bit from uh, from Grand and Petit Champagne. You will get it if you select some uh, some eau de vie from uh, Bordery, uh, from Fimbois. So in order to, um, to, to gain this uh, aromatic intensity, we'll use a specificity uh, during the distillation process. Mm. And uh, when we distill, we will distill with the lees, the yeast, the fine yeast that you find in the, in right. the wine. And this is what gives you this roundness, uh, this um, well, aromatic intensity, as mm -hmm. you say, right. uh, that you will have, especially in the to, to start with in the mouth, the uh, latak, a bit, uh, almost kind of a bit fatty, I would say, oily. Right, right, yeah. exactly. Yeah. Yeah. Uh, it's a bit more complex than a traditional way of, of uh, distillation. We still distill as any other cognac house uh, is distilling. I mean, double distillation process, copper steel, mm -hmm. nothing different. It's just that we use some of the leaves uh, during the distillation. And this oh. gives you uh, the uh, aromatic uh, power, I would say. Okay, uh, it, it, makes, it makes sense. Certainly, definitely a, a richer, deeper, more intense cognac mm -hmm. for sure. And when it comes to the maturation, what would you say uh, puts Hein apart from the bunch? Uh, I often hear that uh, Hein is almost a feminine cognac. Nothing when wrong it, with that. Nothing wrong with that. Uh, on the contrary, this is something I'm very proud of, and I'm, I, I think it's very enjoyable. And I was talking a bit uh, earlier of, of the very manly, overpowering uh, styles of cer certain other houses. Um, I mean, fair enough, it's, this is the kind of thing you like. But our, uh, our uh, policy at Hein is to try, as I said, to bring up the aromas from the raw material, from the, the, the grapes to start with, uh, as high as possible. Mm -hmm. So when it comes to aging, we'll have to uh, make a critical choice when it comes to the cask. And the thing is just, if you have delicate, refined aromas, you don't want to cover that up uh, with uh, too much use of oak. Mm -hmm. So actually we have a, um, a choice of, uh, of casks uh, at Hein, which is quite different from what is the regular thing in, uh, in cognac, I in would say. In what sense? In the sense of, first of all, the selection of the wood. Selection of the wood is very critical and uh, generally speaking for cognac, what is uh, the usual is to use uh, oak from the Troncé region. Mm -hmm. uh, sorry, from, from the, the Limousin. From the Limousin. <laughs> I say Troncé because this is what because we this use. Is your, this is your case, <laughs> right. Uh, from the Limousin, which is quite close to, uh, to the Cognac uh, district, actually. Um, but we, use, we tend to use uh, oak trees coming more from the Troncé or Allier, a little bit further north, further east that have different climatic conditions and different typicity of soils mm -hmm. that make the oak grow um, less uh, fast, uh, takes a little bit longer time, and that makes that the fiber of the wood is uh, tighter. Mm -hmm. It's finer grain, actually, than what is in, um, in uh, Limousin, for instance. Right. So that's the first specificity, fine grain oak, on the contrary to a bit more porous, uh, rougher uh, with grain with the limousin. And the second specificity comes to uh, the toasting, the bousinage, as we uh, call it uh, locally. Uh, once again, we, don't, we, we, we make a very slight toast uh, to our cask. And once again, just to preserve the delicate 
fine aromas that we have in, in, uh, in the eau de vie. So you could almost say that, uh, unlike many other cognac houses, uh, we have a typicity of barrel that is closer to, uh, let's say, a great white burgundy house. All right, so the wood itself is not what makes the cognac. No, definitely, it's just much definitely more not. The typicity of the, the terroir. Oh yes, yeah, yeah. No, no. First of all, as I said, wine. The wine. Mm -hmm. The wine is the most important thing. If you have bad wine, you will you will not be able to produce anything. So it's first the wine, and in order to then accompany the the, the wine that you have distilled the right way, then the choice of cask. Mm -hmm. But the wood is just secondary. I mean, the wood is necessary for aging. Of course. But it's also perfect if you have uh, something to hide. <laughs> mm -hmm. If you want to mask <laughs> any defects, any bad aromas, then boom, you can put a lot of wood. Why don't we release this antique in our glasses? Yeah, yeah, we should. We should because but I actually, didn't mean to cut you off. You no, were no, 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 no. No, but uh, it's good to cut me off because I can go on and on and on. <laughs> 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 no, uh, this is a very good idea because it needs. A bit time to breathe and to uh, to express itself, actually. Very good. It looks like a new bottle to me. Yes. I thought I was familiar with, with the Antique. Antique was uh, created in uh, 1920. It's one of the iconic exos that have been for almost a century around. Mm -hmm. uh, we relatively recently decided uh, to um, go one step further. It used to be a Fin Champagne. Fin Champagne minimum 50% Grand Champagne, the rest of it uh, Petit Champagne. It was almost 100% Grand Champagne. So we decided to take one step further and make it 100% Grand Champagne. This Just is for more uh, depth, quality, why, why exactly? For all those reasons, plus the fact that uh, I think it's, uh, it's a kind of statement of, of quality for the, for the amateurs, you know. Mm -hmm. We make it 100% Grand Champagne, and uh, it will be. I think it gets even more complex than the than the former uh, antique. Actually, well, let's uh, let's taste. Huh? Let's let's see that. Here you go. Antique, you. as I said, is uh, well. Now today, it's uh, it's. Uh, mm. Oh, it's, it's a very different nose already. Grand Champagne exclusively, but the, the idea behind is still the same. Huh? The eau de vies in it are a uh, minimum of 10 years. Uh, the blend is on average of 20. Uh, and you still have the, the great characteristic of aromas that you had in Antique before, but it's just maybe even more complex, I would right, say. Right. That's the main but point. This is, this is a, a, an old XO. Oh yeah, yeah. Because it could be an XO uh, uh, just after six and after six, six years, actually. Yeah, yes. Yeah, so yeah, you yeah, know the uh, as I said, no younger eau de vies than ten, and the average is about twenty. Was it like this in 1920, or is that is this a blend that evolved just the, like it's still evolving today? The blend has been evolving a bit, but it's always been relatively uh, old eau de vies in it. Antique was the nickname. Uh, used uh, by, uh, if I'm not wrong, George Thomas Hein, uh, for the oldest cask he had. So you actually, uh, it's always been a relatively uh, old exo because uh, mm -hmm. it was the, the eau de vie coming from the antique cask mm -hmm. uh, going in this blend. Lovely. A very rich nose. Oh yeah, it is. But still, after 20 years of aging, for me, it's important to note that the freshness of the fruit is still present. Well, certainly no oak is, seems to be hiding anything. Mm. Oak is not the number one aroma here. Mm. I would say that you have the, the oak is the backbone. Mm -hmm. And you have the flesh around, which is the fruit. Well, <laughs> let's see. Pervin, can people go and visit Hein? Well, if they are really passionate, about it, if they really mean serious about it, yes, please. Very good. Should they go on the, on the website, send you an email? Sure, yes. Um, they, I mean, they, there are no official tours three times a day. No, there are no. There are no official tours. We, uh, we are still, uh, in many ways, a family house. 
uh, we are very happy to uh, open the doors of Hein uh, to anyone who really wants it. Mm -hmm. uh, but no, there are no guided tours Don't every day. Don't bring all your friends. Don't bring all your friends at any no. time. <laughs> Only the good ones who can appreciate it. Absolutely. Very good. Thank you so much, Pervin. It, it was very Thank nice you very much for having, you having me here. It's a pleasure. It's, uh, I believe that everybody will, uh, will understand Hein a bit better. And certainly. I hope so. It has that freshness that should tell you this is not only your grandfather's cognac. This should be everybody's cognac. But there are lots of other cognacs, wonderful. Absolutely. One of them in the liquor cabinet. <laughs> Cheers. Thank you. Cheers. <laughs>